Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, you know what day it is. You know what day it is. It's not political day. It's not running for office day. It's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, and we're going to recognize that. Now, in all due respect, it was hard for me to get other folks because everybody was sort of entertaining in, 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 in various areas and whatever, going out to dinner and whatever. But I was able to, I was able to contact a person that, um, that I, in fact, she didn't want to come. And, and she said, Bruce, I'm out here knocking on doors, et cetera, et cetera, and my campaign manager is demanding that. I said, I tell you what, why don't you just bring him along with you, okay? So guess what? We've got Lenita Dukes here. In fact, you know, she's going to be a city council, city council person. Uh, she's going to be on the seat, and I'm going to be the mayor. And then you're looking at my police commissioner right there. No problem. No problem. No problem. Well, anyway, welcome aboard. How you Thank doing? Thank you. Thank good. you for having me good. back again. Well, great, great, great. You brought Landon. New face. Yes. Like that. Like that, you like that very me. much. Well, look, let me tell you what we're going to do. Like I said before, we're going to spend some time talking about Mother's Day. Okay? Uh, and, and in all due respect, the, things have changed to the format to somewhat, uh, you know, meaning that uh, we have Mother's Day, we have Father's Day. But, but Grandparents' Father, Day. But Father's Day is not as exciting as Mother's Day mm-hmm. you know, in many ways. But so now I'm, I'm kind of wanting to change a bit. I'd like to kind of call it a Mother-Father's Day and a Father's Mother's Day. So you get the fathers involved in the process because many men, men you know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. fathers are actually raising their kids. Yeah, they you are. You know, mm-hmm. they're mothers, too. Mm-hmm. See, and the same thing with mothers. And mm-hmm. a lot of times they're raising their, uh, their fathers exactly. in some cases. That's right. so, so they're both, really. So you see, so when it's, when it's Mother's Day, it's Mother Father's Day. When it's Father's Day, it's Father's Mother's Day. Is that, what do you think about that? I think that's very is that, fair. Is that, is that, is that I fair? think that's, that's very fair? fair. So, Lenita, why don't we start with you? And and first off, because I know that the viewing audience want to know who you are. They've never seen you before. You are running for office. What office are you for running for? Office. I'm running for city commissioner, okay. position one. Okay. I want city of people, Portland, right? City of Portland, right. nonpartisan okay. race. Nonpartisan race. And if okay. you haven't sent your ballots in, be sure to send them in Duke. My name is first on the ballot, okay. and I'm so very honored to, and thank you for letting me bring my campaign manager. Landon and I just wanted to say what a great job his mother did with him because okay. he's not sexist and it's rare to run into him into a man and work with a man who's not sexist okay. and for him to take on the mantle intellectually and phys- physically regarding my campaign okay. you know you can't do this without a kitchen cabinet you yes. can't run for right. office without an infrastructure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he helped lay the foundation for the infrastructure so that yeah. I could run oh, and great. challenge an incumbent. Great, great. Yeah, that's 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 pretty heavy. That was pretty heavy. But I I, I wanna I, know why he did it. But but with <laughs> all due respect, you you got yeah. quite a specimen here. Trust <laughs> me. Ah, a specimen. I, I, I do heavy, I do me. see I mean when she came on the hunt, I did not know she was running. And then all of a sudden I said, You gotta be kidding me. You know, really. But then uh, she has all the values, you know, she has all the assets, if you will, because she's been doing basically doing the same thing I've been doing for a number of years, if you will. Radio and TV, we've been doing the whole deal. Communication is key. It is. And and, and the other thing is uh, issues. And we've been covering issues for years and also solutions. That's the neat thing about being a show. You got both. Right. Yes. All we're doing is just facilitating. Yes. And we're educating the public. And so that's why in, in today's world, we need good leadership. And that's the kind of leadership we need. And that's why I'm really excited about the fact that Lenita is running and then the fact that you're now here sitting. And we're talking about, again, that we want to be, we want to spend too much time in politics. We do a little quickie. But we want to talk about our moms. Yeah, but I want him to answer well, that he's question. Gonna do that. He's going to do that. All right, do that. all right. See, 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 see how I'm going to acquiesce to his supervision. No, we, we've got two directors on here. You get to understand I know. It. And I, I, do. I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. We're going to go like this anyway, both, both ways, okay? She'll jump on me in regards to if I don't say anything about my campaign. See, I know that. Go on. Talk, talk about it, Landon. Uh, you got in this campaign, right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I've known Lenita for a very, you know, a long time. Mm-hmm. I've always admired her, uh, admired her journalism, uh, the way that she looks at things and gets to the bottom of things. And I've listened to her for many years, have known her for many years. So the opportunity to work with her is, you know, a, wow. a great opportunity for me and to get behind someone who has a strong value system and their passion for education and, and young people. It is amazing. Awesome. Tell me something. You mind if I ask you, what, what do you do? 
Well, actually, I'm how a. How do you get to this point? I, I do a variety of different things. Okay. Uh, full time, I'm I'm a hairdresser, uh, and that's another way I got to meet oh. uh, Lanita. But I'm also uh, I do a lot of development and uh, hairdresser. Mean like like what do I mean like. Dying, cut, cut hair, cutting hair, you yes. cutting hair. Can, yeah, can you help me out? I can help you out. I'm on this front right here. I, can, you, I, can, I have something for you. You have something. I do. Well, I, I do. gotta make sure you you made the, you, you said something that was exciting with me. You know, sometimes I mean I, I do this purposely, but but the fact of the matter is I mean you know you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I will I talk do. about this after the I show. Do. Okay, okay I have something for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> good man, good man. Okay. But so, mainly he's a developer. But he's a developer. Oh, you're a developer. Property yes. developer. Property developer. He's yeah. the one that taught me about zoning and different codes oh, really? and the alphabet that the city of Portland has in terms of being the engine behind development. Oh, and then you wonder how did Northeast Portland get destroyed and displaced when gentrified is because the city was behind all of that. They knew mm. exactly what they were doing. Well, you know, in all due respect, yeah, yeah, I, I was in it kind of early on myself, mm -hmm. but I was successful enough that I forced the issue right. and built a senior citizen complex, a 38-unit right. senior citizen complex right behind the police department. Okay. Walnut, yes. The yes. Walnut Park. Yes. yes. I did that. Okay. okay. Awesome. Awesome. But the whole other idea was that I wanted to develop that front part, too. Mm -hmm. the, where, where they are, mm -hmm. aspect of it, and actually make, make it sort of a, a, a kind of a community center, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because at one point in time, when Fred Meyer was there, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. seniors would come in there and sit right, down and right, this, this, right, that, right, and the, right. And my idea was, okay, fine, you got senior citizens mm -hmm. over here, you, you get the high rise and whatever, but they were able to come in and sit down and chat, and, and we have your news right, conference but, but and whatever. Bruce, wait, wait, wait. Building a senior center is, is not gentrification, okay? No, no. That's helping the community out. Well, I know, but, but, the, but you're right. But but my point was I was trying to catch it before they would they, oh, before they get the into property, it. So, yeah, yeah, because I, I knew that that was coming, because that property is very valuable, you know, with the water and the whole mm -hmm. nine yard aspect of it. But we didn't have any leadership, and I was just kind of just a young stud, you know, just out there just doing what I want to do, and I did it. Yeah. But my point is that um, I, that's all I could do, and Lenita understands that, you know, because we we sitting right there and and we just didn't have the right leadership. Goldsmith was the uh, was the mayor at that point in time, you know? But I don't want to get too far mm -hmm. in, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. of it. Let's get back to we got to get back to mom, okay? Let's talk about mom a little bit, okay? How about well, yourself? Who do you want to highlight today? Uh, you want to talk about today? I want to talk about the Carters. They raised me. Uh, they came here to Portland, Oregon, like most African Americans. They came to work on the shipyard and the railroad, uh -huh. and these are the people that took me in. I refer to them as my grandparents. And they took in foster kids. So I was, I'm really a foster kid. Really? I was placed in their home when I was eight months old, and they raised me. Hmm. And when I was about 11 and 12, I ran away from home, hmm. joined the Portland chapter of the Black Panther Party. Because, oh. you know, I'm a Black Panther, former right, Black right. Panther. Okay. And they, uh, they raised me, and of all the things I've done in my life, mm -hmm. the most important thing I ever did was my relationship with my grandmother. Because when I got pregnant, now I got pregnant at 15. 15. Yes. And that's the worst time to be pregnant and in foster care. Because if you're a foster child, uh, the state assumes legal responsibility for that baby. Mm, wow. And all this was coming down to me. But remember, I'm autodidactic. I used to play hooky from school in the library. Mm -hmm. So I knew there was a law called emancipation. So I took the state of Oregon to court. It was called CSD at that time, mm -hmm. Children's, Children's Services Division, Divisions. Right. And I took them to court, and I won because they made me, and I had no choice because I was in a foster home. I just had my baby. Two social workers came by, and I had to sign legal custody of my little girl over to them. Hmm. And in my mind's eye, I can see my daughter going through life in foster homes, and I didn't want like that for you, my yeah, child. Yeah, basically, you didn't want it, yeah. I did not right, want right. that for my child. Wow. So I took the state to court and became an emancipated minor. And what that did, uh, the state had no jurisdiction over me. But the way this gets back to my grandmother is mm -hmm. that when I got pregnant, she was the only one that wasn't disappointed in me. You know, and it seems wow. auto, wow. you know, auto intuitive wow. or counterintuitive that mm -hmm. she wouldn't, she wasn't angry with me. Wow. That was mom. But the thing is, after I had my baby, I forgot why I was so angry with her. Mm. And I had an epiphany. And what happened was she never changed. People in our lives who are older, they don't change. You know who changed in that relationship? Yes. That's me. right. That's right. And when maturity happens to you, it happens very gradually, and you don't even know when it happens. Mm -hmm. It's just something changes in your relationships. Mm -hmm. 
So I forgot why I was so angry with her. <laughs> so she helped me with the baby and then my grandfather had a stroke. So she was taking care of him and doing what she could for me. And one day she told me to move in with her, incorporate my things into her house because she was going in the hospital mm -hmm. to have gallbladder surgery. And this is when I first started Grassroot News. So I was very self-centered, mm -hmm. just into my own how, thing. How old were you then? I was 20, 20 21. Okay. Okay. It was in 1980. It was the year that Mount St. Helens blew. Mm -hmm. And I always mm -hmm. think my grandmother went to that volcano because that's the year that both my grandparents died. Mm -hmm. And now my, Mount St. Helens, I understand, is starting to rev up again, right? Yes, it's yes, starting yeah, to oh yeah, yeah. build again, earthquakes right and so forth. Yes. So I moved back in with my daughter, and lo and behold, it turns out that she had pancreatic cancer. And this is 1980 wow. in uh, Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And as many of us know, pancreatic cancer is a very serious, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it's one of the few things, you don't really appreciate your pancreas till something goes wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the on-off switch in our bodies. Mm -hmm. When that bad boy goes off, then your time yeah, but, yeah, on this planet right. ceases. Yeah. Yeah. But because I was there, and although we had no biological tie, they couldn't put her in a nursing home, right? Mm -hmm. So me and my dumb self, with my little girl, we took care of her. And she was able to die in her own, own house, in her own, own bed, bed in yeah. her own bedroom. And I'm watching all this transpire. I'm thinking, what the heck is, I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. But I did the best I could. Yeah. My yeah. little daughter would count out her little pills because she had little teeny tiny hands. Yes. And we didn't know what we were doing, but we kept her she out kept of a nursing home. Mm -hmm. So they had visiting nurses come by. And the visiting nurses referred to her by her first name. Wow. Oh, my God. You do not talk. You do not refer to an old mm -hmm. Southern woman mm -hmm. by their first name. No, no, no. Oh, my God. So I was able to school her and say, no, no, don't you don't call her by her mm -hmm. first name. And, you know, after she passed, the visiting nurses sent me a very lovely card saying, mm -hmm. we really appreciate what you taught us. And they really appreciated me being there. But again, you know, when someone leaves this planet, you want to give them a good yeah. death. And I think of all the children that she raised, I was the worst one because I ran, but I'm the prodigal daughter, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I returned when she needed me. Funny. So of everything I've done, all the awards that I've won, they mean nothing. The most important thing to me was that incident. Nothing on this planet, nothing I've done since tops it. Wow, wow, wow. So now I got a 42, dig this, I got a 42-year-old daughter wow. who's a mother and an excellent mother. Your and grandma, I'm 58, your grandma. Yeah, I'm 58 years old, so if you do the math, you can figure out that I was 15 when I had wow. her. Wow. But uh, of all the mothers out there, I think of all the, the uh, mothers who helped me, because yes. Mia and I would walk down the streets, up and down the streets, and people would either help me because they felt sorry for my yeah, daughter, right, right, right. or they felt sorry for me. Right, but right. I was always pushing. I wow. wasn't on welfare. I wow. didn't get food stamps. Wow. I was just always hustling. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm going to wow. do this. I'm going to yeah. do that. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Right? I did, and I kept doing it. You know, I raised my daughter down at KBU Radio. Wow. So she grew up with audio gear, and <laughs> microphones, wow. and wow. music. And Beautiful. mixers. Beautiful. And then when she was a little older, I said, Now, Nia, I need you to help me learn to edit. So I had to teach her to edit with a grease pencil and a razor blade. Wow. And she learned to edit that way. She knew how to edit audio when wow. other little girls were playing with dolls. Wow. So recently I asked her, I said, Nia, wouldn't you rather have a normal mama? You know, someone that bakes cookies and does normal stuff. What did you do? She said, Mom, normal is relative. <laughs> she said, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Being raised by you. I mean, we once wow. had a paper route for 100 days so I could wow. buy a new microphone. Wow. <laughs> so wow. she earned wow. money for school clothes, right? Wow. And I earned money to buy a wow. microphone. But oh my God, we worked wow. from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. every day, wow. 100 days. And the only people that were out at that time, and this was during the early 90s, were drug addicts, the police, possums, wow. and cats. Wow. And one day, I was so busy, but there was this mother kitten, or mother cat, and she just had a, a bunch of kittens. Litter. Okay. A, what do you call a it? A litter. A litter of yeah. kittens. Yeah. And they were just so cute. So I stopped <laughs> at that moment to play with them, because I didn't want that moment to pass. So sometimes we get so busy, and we yes. get to living yes. up in yes. our heads, yes. that we don't take time to enjoy that moment. And I remember that moment because I had so much fun with those kittens for wow. like five minutes wow. when I had papers to deliver. Wow, wow, wow. 
Wow. And, I, and I'm glad I took that moment because I enjoyed it. All the little kittens were playing with me and the mother cat was cool. And Nia said, that's my daughter, come on, wow. mom, let's go. Wow. And she, we, we worked really hard and we worked very hard all our lives. You know, I keep saying wow because... I never knew that about you. Yeah, well, I don't talk about you, you my personal life. She wouldn't say life. anything. And yeah, you know, there she was did. working at the Observer. I thought, it, right. I thought the mountain was blowing all the time. Every time I saw her, she said, oh, heck, and Bruce, he's going to be getting on me again today. <laughs> but she, but she, we, we were working. We were, it was a little team aspect. Of it. Right. I was doing my thing, whatever, at the Portland Observer aspect. Well, those, you were salesman. Those some good times. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that was some I good times. But I clashed with you constantly. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But I didn't know that part of it. Yeah, that's uh, that's my story. Jeez, so uh, Jeez, Norman, I probably would have adopted you, but oh so, no, then you know, who would have taken care of no, uh, Norma? My you know how Norma was, right? Yeah, you know how Norma yeah, was. Norma would just yeah. say, "Look, fine, let's find something for you know." But, and yeah. I've had other people that know my story, and they say the same thing. But you yeah. know what? I'm like my daughter. You did it. You did it. I'm glad I was there yeah, for her yes, yes. and her husband. Uh, I grandma. gave her yeah. a good death. Yes. And she went to Mount St. Yeah. Helens. Oh, and now wow. she's stirring. I need her help because I want to win city council. Well, you've already won. Sometimes you can win by losing. You, you, there's no such thing as losing. I don't know. My campaign manager and I were at remember the that. Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. Oh, remember yes, that? Yes, yep. yes, yes. And I was able to snatch the endorsement away from Amanda Fritz. But right. she had her people there. So they ended up doing no endorsement. Right. And to me, that was a victory. And in all due respect, I, I got to admit straight up, I knew about it because the fact of the matter is I, um, I was forcing Cal to do that, to invite, in all due respect, is the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. Mm -hmm. right. But he was, he was basically was not going to, he was going to try to make it just over Ross and no. You should identify the blacks who are running for office. Yeah, yes. but I didn't want their endorsement no, 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 because no. I was black. No, 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 no. But the idea is that he has an organization that says that. Right. That's right. what I'm saying. That's the point I'm making. Right. It was going to be across the board. But the idea, I want to make sure that people recognize the fact that there are some African Americans that are running for office. Right. There are a lot of people of color running for office yes. in 2016 but, uh, in the state of Oregon, oh, yes. which is amazing. Yes, Don't you yes, think so, yes. Lynn? I think it's, yes, yes. it's amazing yes. that people are so involved and so yes. engaged. And it is a time for change. But we need to make not we need to make a, a acknowledge that point. See, it's very we do. important. And people are we starving need, for that information. Right. And we that's need why people I had like him on that the show. That that's why I had him that. on the show to talk about it. You got me? Right. But the but the point I'm making is that see, he did that purposely. I, I'm I'm very I'm a little disappointed. He with did that Cal. purposely what by, by doing not, no endorsement? That's right. Shh. No, he endorsed his own crowd and he had yeah, no that's one true. he had no African American that was endorsed. On on his page that that's that's on his on his Facebook, that went out. I I I got But the very thing is, she it. did right. it that endorsement, no. and she wanted it, but she didn't deserve it, and she didn't earn it. Well, let's make let's make the point. The point of the fact that you were endorsed. My, 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 not you endorsed. My point. You you won the debate, if you will. You got. Well, you the nod, were there. Right? Do you think I won the debate, Landon? Well, that, that's why they didn't list her. <laughs> well, this is this is what I. Think is about yeah. that organization. I think the organization could be much more powerful yes. if they actually yes. did identify yes. uh, people of color that yes. they do endorse. Exactly. And I don't think we do that enough in no. this city. That's right. We have way too much division. We and, do this is, and this is the reason why I'm supporting I what you. we need to do. Well, that's why we. That's what I do. What I do. That's what I, I do. What and, I do. And, and I'm and glad that, that you are here. And that's doing why this. she was doing what she was doing when she was on cable. Right. Okay. There was there wasn't that I'm still on cable down there. We, we still are. Well you still are. You'll probably be taking another seat here too uh, as, as time goes around. You see what no, I mean? but I am really surprised Bruce Broussard Landon is giving me so much support. Oh well, you, you deserve and, it. You uh, deserve it. You, well, you spent a lot of given time how we clash, I was yeah, really man. amazed. He's been nothing oh. but supportive. And the Multnomah County uh, group that he's affiliated with, they were very supportive. And, you know, we are both black Republicans, yes. which is an anomaly in this city. Yep. And again, I'm a Republican be as a reaction to the hypocrisy of liberalism that is Multnomah County, the hypocrisy yep. Yep. here in the uh, city. And it's like what I, I disagree with the Mercury when they didn't endorse me. But I agree with the Mercury when they talked about the lack of proportional voting here in the mm -hmm. city of Portland. Mm -hmm. Even you agree mm -hmm. in single member districts. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we need to educate voters. Mm -hmm. So as these new people come in to live in Portland, they're going to wonder why is it the same old, same old yeah. who yeah. are in power. And it's yeah. because we have an at-large voting system. Yeah, exactly. If we had uh, single member districts where individuals were elected based on their geographical area, yeah. we would have a much more diverse group of people 
we would have a much more, more in touch engagement engaging mm -hmm. with people instead of with letting this at large voting process oh, yeah. is oh, yeah. portland is too dynamic of a city to have such an old school of well, you it's, know, it's going to happen when we get elected. See, well, I may not be on this. Uh, oh, when we get elected, okay. Yes, yeah. we, we well, are we're right. elected now. So you got to understand. When you filed to run for office, you were a city commissioner. <laughs> okay, your, your, I term, right. your term in office is up to May seventeenth. May seventeenth. Now, if you're given an opportunity to go again, you'll go till November. You have to You see what I'm saying? And then from there on. But the, my point is that you can do all sorts of creative things between now and November. Yeah, you but can even, Bruce, you can even put a, a write in. You know what I'm you saying? You are amazing because you poll number three. Yeah. And you have not spent all the money that those other two candidates have spent. You've not gone to all those uh, debates because I haven't seen you, my brother. Yeah. Well, I've been, and, I haven't been invited. I wasn't invited. To, and, that was, and that's unfair. That's I, that's I wasn't unfair. invited, okay? Yeah, you should have been invited. Yeah, that's right. But that's here right. you've spent less money, but it's your get up and go that engages people. And the fact that you're polling at three, you can easily become number two. I mean, this is really a wonderful accomplishment on your part. Well, thank and you, I want to congratulate you I, I, I thank you, you very much. It. But my focus is the people and the issues that we're talking and about. And people that's believe that. You know, and they, that's why you're polling. You have great name recognition, almost as great as mine. Really? Yes. <laughs> so that nice of her to say it. She, at least, she, she at least acknowledged it to me. I really appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that. Look, we, we, run out, we run out of time. We don't have anybody here. That'd be a good. But we got to about another eight minutes that we can do this but if no one shows up we'll get, continue the piece but i want to make sure we get landon in so he can talk about oh, mom absolutely. for a minute yeah. come on landon talk about uh, my mother's day well mother my mother was an amazing person uh the main thing that i remember about my mom is that we were in business together mm -hmm. and uh when i started doing uh buying and selling uh, rental property i was 18 and she was my first business partner wow beautiful and so I uh, remember she uh, lost her job uh, and they cut the company. And so she had about $40,000 mm -hmm. in um, her retirement. And I started buying my first house at 18 uh, on a contract. And she says, hey, can you help me to make money? Hmm. So I have a retirement. And I said, sure. Wow. So she handed me her $40,000 and I bought about 10 more pieces of property with beautiful, it. Beautiful, so, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so we had a great time for 10 years being in business together yeah. and uh as she got older um you know we just would go i'd take her out to eat every uh weekend with my family and beautiful. uh her and my dad and we just had a great old time beautiful beautiful so, beautiful so happy mother's day yeah, it's a happy mother's happy day, mother's day. Yeah. Yeah, i'll tell you what i'll just be brief on my aspect of it when that my mom passed away too but like lenita i was here i was here living in portland and mom got sick back in texas back in oh. houston texas and uh, when well, my brother and I, and we were supposed to take care of him, unfortunately, he's just not the same kind of a guy. But the bottom line, he was, she was in, um, in a home. And so I decided, well, I'm gonna go back. And so I, I, left, I left and went back to Houston, Texas and back, brought her back home to mm -hmm. her home. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with her at that home until she passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she was a beautiful lady. I mean, she I mean, wonderful, wonderful. I, I had good parents. I had some real good parents, and uh, that's what I remember about her. The fact of the matter is, like like Nita said, I made sure that uh, she was able to. She had all of her possessions right there, and I spent the, I spent every day with her, mm -hmm. and talking, speaking that good Creole. I'm, I'm a Creole, <laughs> you know, and I, she likes that part. I cook. I do a lot of cooking, a lot of cook Creole cooking. Made a lot of gumbo, jambalaya, and this, that, and the other. But it was it was a beautiful time during that particular time, so that's that's my mom. Mm -hmm. And then my and Lena knows a little bit more about what she knows about my my present wife Norma, mm -hmm. beautiful lady, heck of a mom. Great cook. She's a great cook, yeah. fantastic person, very articulate, you know, and and just a very supportive kind of person. It's as if we just got married, as if mm -hmm. because she's such a she's that kind of a person. Yeah, she must be really tolerant to live with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes her so good. She I know she's like, like a saint. She's, she's she's good people, but, but Norma is fantastic, and and that's why I'm sitting here where I'm at here now. Yes. Very supportive aspect mm -hmm. of it, 
and she's raised she's raised her boys and my boys because that was my second I it was both our second marriage mm -hmm. aspect of it and but she, we raised those those guys and it was fantastic and now we've got we've got 12 grandkids oh good wow. congratulations 12 grandkids Bruce. i mean yeah. big time you know what i'm saying you so, could have a big paper route with yeah, 12 very much so yeah <laughs> cover <laughs> more area <laughs> <laughs> i only had one and we only covered like uh two or three miles but yeah. with 12 oh, boy hey, you can hey, do... i got some folks i got yeah. some folks so this is this is great so so again i'd like to say happy mother's day to her and, uh, and my and mom naturally and her mom too by the way but then there was another experience that i had yesterday again knocking on doors mm -hmm. i was knocking on doors up there in, in old town and you know, actually visiting again the the homeless over there and i ran into a, a, a mother and a, a daughter uh, and they, they happened to be russian of all mm -hmm. mom wouldn't wouldn't you know she was kind of a little skittish a little bit aspect of it but she spoke Russian and whatever, but they're on the streets. Mm -hmm. and, uh, two, they're homeless? She, they were homeless, okay. and she's kind of a young woman. She's about 24, 25 or so, and uh, some folks were kind of messing with her, if you will, trying to sell her drugs, mm -hmm. sort of basically take her in and do, do their mm -hmm. thing, so to speak. And I intervened and, and uh, pulled her aside, talked to the folks, and said, hey, look, well, you can't do any business over here. You know, mm -hmm. let, let's give it up. So long, long and short of all this, I had to, I chatted with her and and the, the, the thing that she was making the point about the fact she was born here. Mm -hmm. uh, she came in with, with Russians when the the slot was it uh, back in those old days when the in the 1980s yeah, when the, the wall came Yeah, the Russians, yeah, the Russians all came over mm -hmm. here and aspect mm -hmm. of it. And then my mom came over here and then uh, eventually she got married. She had the child, if you will, and there they were. But she was, she was. It was the commitment that she had about her mom mm -hmm. about making sure that she was protected. She had her right there. It wasn't as if she left left her somewhere mm -hmm. and she was out on the street. You could tell that she's probably been in drugs, you know, mm -hmm. before, if you will. But she had her mom there, and she was she was very sensitive about her mom. She would say, "Okay, fine, you stay here and and, and don't move and that kind of thing and whatever." But I was I was very impressed with that. But also, it just tells you you got seniors that are out on the streets too. You mm -hmm. got families that are out on the streets that are homeless aspect of it. And by George, you know, it bothers me that no action has been taken uh, by our so-called elected officials. When you think about housing, it is the responsibility of the city of Portland, the bureau, if you will, the housing bureau, housing authority of Portland. That's their job. Right. The job is to identify how many houses, I mean, how many houses they have, if you will, uh, uh, how many veterans are housed, how many are homeless, how many housing, how many homeless are out there, and what are the needs for housing, uh, what are, what are, what are the rent rates? All that that should all be taken care of right there in that arena. But you got, but like Lenina said, until until we get that push, that engagement. You know what I'm saying? We got four people just sit, excuse me, in front just sitting on their butt, so to speak. And you know, so they need to be res more responsible. So if you identify each one of them in each of those areas, aspect of it, then if housing is a, an issue in that particular area, which would have been, let's say, in this one particular district, because that would, that would talk about downtown aspect of it, then all of a sudden, people start talking about it, demanding whatever, and then they'll, they'll identify what the issue is, uh, figure out what how much it's going to cost, send it up to the mayor's office, mm -hmm. and then that might be a smaller issue in these other areas, but the idea is at the end of the day, uh, they identify what are the major issues. We may have enough money for maybe 10, maybe, maybe 8 out of 10, got me? And, and then you, you're getting something done. And then as far as the mental illness, that's, that's another major, major, major problem. That's the county's job. And you know, you know we, we know about that old piece. We got the Wapato deals as right. part of the, the sheriff aspect of it. Well, since then, the county has taken it over now. The county has taken it over. And I'm asking the question, where are the homeless? I mean, well, we've got 300 beds over here. We've got mental illness. Open the damn thing up. Mm -hmm. Give them the opportunity to get in there. But they're having meetings. Every time we walked, I walked up there knocking on the doors. It was, <laughs> they give me a card. They threw a card in the front of me. Right. Set up a meeting. Well, what does George two, Carlin weeks. say? Anytime you want to make sure nothing gets done, Have set a up a committee. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's all they're doing. <laughs> Just setting up, committee. setting up that's a committee. People yeah. want some action. They want some. They want some results. And we need to. We got to pick them up. As far as I'm concerned, let's pick them all up. Take them down to Wapato. Process them. Find out who's on. See, people don't even know who's on the street. They don't even know who's on the street and what the issues are. Well, there was a major count two months ago where all across the nation they do a head count of people experiencing homelessness. Now, I think what the city and county is it has real done, though? Do you know that for a fact? I, That's the problem. Well, I know they do the counting. I don't know how accurate the numbers. It's not are. accurate. Trust okay. me. I, I've all been right. out well, there knocking I, on I them doors. <laughs> I think the city's done a great job in housing veterans and i know mm -hmm. you're a vet and the issues about that veterans experience are top of your list 
the way the city and the county work together to house veterans, they can use that same approach to house families, to mm -hmm. house individuals, men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we're going to have a big armory closing May 31st, I think oh, yeah. the Jerome Sears yeah. shelter is going to close, and then you're going to have more people on the streets. But, you know, I, th I disagree with Charlie Hill and how he handled this problem. I think he made it worse. You got camps where people are shooting, and they not only they're shooting pistols, they're shooting up, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, they're so. by schools. They're by businesses. I don't think that people should be allowed to camp on a sidewalk. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And needles knee being thrown all on the streets, right. in the parks, you know, where the kids are playing and whatever. You got animals out there, you got kids and whatever, and right. those needles. Well, you know, we got to give props to Dignity Village. Now, that was a, well, that was a group yeah, of he was, people. He was on here. He was on oh, here. Oh, he, and he is, he is well, a wonderful very, individual. Very, very He's guy. smart. Very guy. I like how they manage themselves. Yep. They yep. take care of each other, and they're respectful neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thing. And that's all we ask of people is that they manage themselves, they right. respect neighbors. And I like how they police themselves, yeah. too. Yeah. So I think there are solutions to the problem. Nobody is asking the right question. Yeah, now, true. in my I campaign, everything I've learned from Landon in terms of develop development, I had an idea. And the idea is we spend so much time worrying about people on the upper end right. and a lot of time worrying about people on the lower end. Right. What about the folks in the middle? That's right. The yeah. man in the middle, like Michael Jackson talked about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. individuals and families in mm -hmm, the middle. Mm -hmm. The city of Portland could create a pilot project for people struggling to pay their mortgage. They could help them create a room and a bathroom and rent that bad boy out. You solve two problems with one initiative. You help that family and that individual keep their home in their neighborhood and you provide affordable housing to individuals and families. Well, it's like senior citizens. We, That's we like a win-win mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, we, were doing, yep, yeah. we were doing that with yeah. senior citizens. It's creative, it's, there. it's Very cost creative. effective, Very much so. and you help people Very much who so. need Very help so. before they enter yeah. homelessness. Very much That's so. right. Because they're never going to become wealthy yeah. unless so. they win the lottery. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to take a short break. Okay. And then we're going to come back and, and talk about why it's so difficult to get you elected. How about getting you elected? There we go. I like that. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be back. Because there are some issues that are out there. There's some, you know, from the standpoint of no orientation when you follow them. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. My guest today, uh, we t well, first off, we're talking about Mother's Day, but again, we spent that part on the first half of the of the show, and uh, so what we're going to do now is we want to talk a little bit, a little bit politics right now. We got, again, again, we got a mom here, and we've already made that. We've got we've got a campaign director, and he also we we we, we acknowledge mom, but now we want to get mom elected to. To office exactly. because we need her in a particular position. We need leadership. That's what it's all about. I'm not knocking anybody else that's running for office. That's what it's all about. It's not the individual. It's the issue, folks, and it's a solution to the issues. And we're not doing that. And that's why I'm hitting it real hard. Thank goodness for the rest of the folks. But this is just primary too. This is just the primary. Sometimes I even wonder about when I start thinking about the primary. Maybe we may need to ha make it. Maybe a partisan situation. Well, then this the is a might closed. Vote. It is partisan. Yeah. It's no, a closed partisan no, But if it was a nonpartisan oh, deal, yeah. then all of a sudden you'll have two people there, regardless. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but some people go, well, gee whiz, Bruce is very liberal in this area. You are a Republican. Uh, I could care less. It's the issue. Right. Yeah, I'll that's drive true. that home. It's the issue. It's not about Republican, Democrat, that's Independent. True. It's the issue. Remember that, folks, when you're looking at that ballot. When you're looking at that ballot, check that out. Okay, it's the issue. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about. Um, 
uh, about well the cost for running for office. What do you have to do if you? Because the, the word is now, as I've learned, if you don't have ten thousand dollars in the bank. If you don't have ten thousand dollars in the bank, you can forget about I.E. being uh, reaching out and basically and being getting into debates and and the media and putting your names out there. All free stuff, by the way. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I, I thank fair? God for social media. My daughter mm -hmm. well, is my social let's media. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Direct. I mean, you have a very nice Facebook page. I have a very nice Facebook page. I, you know, you load a lot of stuff on Facebook. People can friend you and see what's going on on your Facebook mm -hmm, page. Mm -hmm. Let's put one up. Here's one right there. There's oh, my, yeah, there's Bruce my page Broussard. right there. There's my page right there. And then, he has a very nice page. You know what I mean? And we just, got through talking, and we just got through talking about the Russian family aspect of it. But you, you capture things. You know, that's the, people want to see you in action, getting your hands dirty, you know, mm -hmm. getting out there, you know. And that's where we've sort of been focusing. And Kay's been doing an excellent job. And my yes. job is out there getting out there and doing what I'm supposed to do as mayor. Mm -hmm. And like we said before, when I filed the run for office, I was mayor that day. Well, and, I, and I, I've been doing it every I agree so. with Landon. You, you're polling uh, very high for someone that's like me, only spending $750. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, like you said, $10,000. Yeah. You have to educate people to give to campaigns. Mm -hmm. Not everyone knows that when you're running for political office that you need money. Mm -hmm. And although they say, what do they say about money being the mother's milk of politics? <laughs> right? I'm just learning that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you got, it's so you Mother's got, Day, right? Yeah. So, so, so you got to be creative. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's like a litter of puppies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, excuse the French, there's only one tit there that's yeah. got the milk. So guess yes. what? Everybody's fighting for They're it. Fighting for the same so thing. That, you got to do what you have. You got to be yeah. creative. Yeah, yeah but you, we're lucky, Bruce, yeah, because we are. We are in a nonpartisan race, yep. and in the state of Oregon, it is a closed primary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, no, I think I think it's been great. I mean, I, and but again, the other thing anyone about can vote for us. the other thing about being an effective runner, if you will, you got to run more than just once. Yeah, you just stay stay focused, right. find out what the issues are in the area, and that's and we, we've been blessed, if you will, mm -hmm. because we were talk show hosts. Exactly, you know, and we exactly. were interviewing issues, if you will. Mm -hmm. But but when you get out. After get doing the interview and getting out there and dealing and touching that issue, it makes you a more effective, if you will, talk show host. But at the same time, you got that knowledge, okay? So that Facebook thing was kind of like a evolved as a result of that. You know what I mean? From the standpoint, I knew what I was doing, mm -hmm. because I, and I knew that it wasn't as expensive as the the full ad routine. Because nowadays, no newspaper. A lot of people don't read the newspapers. They don't. They don't read no Oregonian or whatever. A lot of people don't. They don't look at any news. Know. Now they'll listen to cable right? because it's kind of a, you know, it's a kind of a special kind of a piece yeah, there. Yeah, sort you know of anti-establishment. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So people out there looking for that action. You know what well, I mean? you know, Landon always tells me that people are looking for change. Maybe you can expand on that. Yeah, talk about that. Well, I think um, I like to highlight uh, Donald Trump has been an excellent okay, example okay. of how people want something different. Mm -hmm. So there is an electorate out there that are interested in what he has to say. Now, when we speak about the city of Portland, we think of uh, you know different commissioners that have ran that have been different. And they've gotten a lot of uh, action, so mm -hmm. to speak, uh, because they thought different. Mm -hmm. I think that the city of Portland wants different leadership, somebody that can actually lead them, who understands what they think. I think Lenita Duke is that person. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. why oh, yeah. I support oh, yeah. her oh, yeah. so strongly. Mm -hmm. And she has a great background. She's very educated, you know, and she's very sensitive mm -hmm. to people's mm -hmm. needs. And mm -hmm. so she's a different candidate, uh, not the usual uh, talking head like we see with some other candidates. Yes. That yes. Every yes. time you yes. ask them a question, it's yes. scripted. Yes, 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 yes. But that's been the standard. And that, and that, that was is standard. what people don't, don't want. They don't want that anymore. They it's want something different. All over the country. And, and they've heard that. And yeah, and, exactly. I, and we're running against Amanda Fritz. Yes. And Amanda Fritz is a talking head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the Street Route interview really differentiated us because I answered the questions. Mm -hmm. In fact, my answers, I think, were much more poignant and to the point. And the questions were answered mm -hmm. as opposed to those vague mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. platitudes that right. politicians mm -hmm. engage. Gin, and that's not what people want. I've had uh, in my kitchen cabinet, I've had advisors say, well, you shouldn't be so explicit. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I am going to be explicit because that's what people want. That's where I developed my idea mm -hmm. for the families in the middle. That's mm -hmm. a very explicit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. solution mm -hmm. to a difficult problem. Mm -hmm. And it's something that could be done without... Uh, you know, uh, major construction. You can mm -hmm. do it at a grassroots level. Mm -hmm. 
Well, in all due respect, you're, you're right, right on, because that's the whole idea about single member district or mm -hmm. districtizing the area aspect of it. Because we do have some very effective neighborhood associations. We do. We got 11, but you know, imagine again, like I said, you have 12, you have two in each, actually, mm -hmm. you know, we, got seven, we got 11, right? We got 11, we got 11, yeah, right, we got 11. But the whole idea is to, uh, now you've got the neighborhood association, and then we don't have to worry about going through IE trying to get three votes as, mm -hmm. as our mayor. I will assign the person to that particular area right. depending upon their resume. You got me? Right. Okay? And then, um, and then, and then, and then and if one doesn't want to do that, then guess what? They get no bureaus. Right. But I'll still give the phone number and right. the person's name <laughs> to that area. That's right. If you don't want to do nothing, do that. And talk to the people. Okay? Right. And then we'll just get done. Because that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. We give these, they, they want to engage. They know what to, they know what to do, right. but, but they're not able to do that. And, and I'm not knocking all due respect when you start thinking about the commissioners, like we're talking about Amanda. They've been doing this all, for, that, that's been the standard. Yes. Right. They get a bureau, and then they do their little pet projects with that kind of a piece. Well, the people who benefit for that just benefit, i.e., mm -hmm. if, you, if you gave her some money or give mm -hmm. whoever, mm -hmm. then just for that one group. We're talking about the whole city of Portland. Right. We got issues across the board, just like these potholes. You know, the gas tax. What is the gas? Where is the money going to go? Yeah, and if you look at the ballot, there are two requests for taxes on yep. the current yes. ballot. Yes. I'm voting vote no for all That's that. Right. That's right. We Oregonian, Oregonian did the same thing. They you know, voted no. Well, voted for no once, on we, Oregonian and Lady yep. Duke yep. agree. Yep. And I agree. <laughs> Big time. Well, you know, it, and the thing about city council is... City Council, and I believe uh, Ms. Duke will do this, is that City Council actually has to manage the money that you is set to. aside. It has to. We have, we spend 28 cents on every dollar in revenue that we receive from the utility companies, PGE and PPL. We are supposed to spend 100% of the money that we get mm -hmm. from PPL and PGE mm -hmm. for the roads. Right, But right. we spend 28 cents of wow. every dollar. And where's the money going? No one knows. It's called pit projects. And now so often they'll find a couple million here, uh, and, twenty million here. And now they want to cut the auditor's budget. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, they want to cut the auditor's budget. So, so this is the reason why uh, organizations like PDC, no one knows where the money goes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Thirty percent of all that money is supposed to be set aside for affordable housing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. homelessness, people who are the most challenged. If you take $157 million in, how much money should you have? Mm -hmm. One third is yeah, $50 yeah. million. That's, dollars. Right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Why do we have this homeless problem? We shouldn't have it at all. That's why we need change. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you got all this development, you got all these, all these going on. So my position would be very simple. I'll call these the developers in and say, hey, by the way, uh, remember that number I gave that 10% uh, as far as 10% of the low income? Mm -hmm. It went up to 20%. <laughs> you want a permit? Bill. Yeah, and they need to build up higher. We're well, just gonna yeah, have yeah, to yeah, look yeah. like We gotta Seattle. demand something, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Because we got issues. We're throwing we we're actually pushing people out of the areas. That's that whole issue. And it's not excuse the French, it's not just northeast Portland. It's right. all you're over right. the city. You're right. It's all you're over right. the city. It's all it's over the city. city. You're right, and, you're right, you're right. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and Southeast right. Portland has been a whipping they've, they've treated them like a whipping boy for years, you know, not doing anything. In fact I've been out there working with the businessmen on, on Foster Road. You mean right. Northeast Port? No, no, Southeast. Southeast Port. Southeast. 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 Yes. Oh, yes. oh, it's yeah. hard. Yes. I mean, I was up there dealing with, those, with some of the businesses out there, and in all due respect, here comes uh, some uh, the developers and, and the bicyclists. Mm -hmm. They want to basically duplicate the same thing they're doing in Northeast Portland. No respect, if you will, for the small business guy. Mm -hmm. And a plan that they had, they had had, two of them, that basically accommodated, if you will, bicycles and this, that, and this, but they didn't want that. They just wanted two lanes as opposed to four lanes. And that's a, that's almost like a highway. And Lindy and I have talked about this many <laughs> times. Yes. So, and this is something that we, you know, I am so behind her on. So, remember how they did MLK? Yep, 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 yep. Put that divider in there. That's they right. put that divider in there. It, it killed businesses. all the businesses. All the businesses. That's right. Okay, this is the same plan that they're doing on PAL or on uh, Foster Road. That's right, Exactly. Exactly the same thing. That's why we need change. So do we kill that area just because we want to put that's a right. bicycle lane that's down right, there? That's right. And Novak was basically following the same deal. Exactly. Same concept. So, so it's kind of like saying we've been beating up on the folks who have been running the city. They need to understand they got to come to the table because the masses are going to just all of a sudden they're just going to take over. They don't understand about this 
15 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an mm -hmm. hour because they're going to have to pick up the tab. Well, but and if they plus, work together, if you will, yeah. guess what? They'll keep it, get it up. The, 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 the masses, they have not read Portland Comprehensive Plan. No, yes. The new plan yes, that they're going to, that they think they're going to implement. Well, I've read it, and, I, and a lot of people that read it, they respond to it, and if you read the response, none of those responses to the Portland Comprehensive mm -hmm, Plan says, mm -hmm. oh my golly, this is a great plan. Yeah. People are saying no, no, yep, no. Yep, yep. But they've been doing that, all, they've been doing this on an ongoing uh, basis. On right. basis. It's got every, to stop. That's yeah, right. Every that's the whole plan, idea. Right. That's why we need change. You've got to have all. change, and here's the change there right here. That's Give right. Five of them there, buddy. All right, five of them. city council boy, right there. We're gonna get this thing done. So one, one well, of there's folks, two votes right here. No, 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 no. That, that's all you need. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's all you need. There's two that's votes all, on council all, right that's here. All, that's all you need. You know, it's all it's, in all due respect. Another issue that's that's pretty heavy on the piece is the holy shit police. You know, I, I know her background. You know, police. Mm -hmm. You know, I know my background, mm -hmm. being a jarhead, former marine type mm -hmm. routine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it is paramilitary aspect of it. But, you know, when you get through training, they know the job. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now we got police. That's what we do need law enforcement right. to, to enforce the laws that we, the people, actually lay out. Right? You got So in this, the training with that, whatever, whatever that packet is, there's also law enforcement that understand. They're trained, too. But the people need to know what the laws are. Right. The right. people need to know what their trainings are about. Then, hey, it's, it's there. But uh, when I think about the forty-five, was it forty-five uh, hour rule deal? You know about the whole no, idea, the forty-eight uh, hour, the four, yeah. forty-eight hour rule aspect mm -hmm. of it. So uh, everybody's kind of like playing around with it. Now all of the folks who basically said, "Well, I'm for it," they, they didn't have any option. They didn't have anything to say. Well, okay, fine. This is what I'm going to have in lieu of that. Everybody just politically said, "Okay, fine. I'm for the forty-eight. Well, and well, they put that in their contract, so yes. to change that 48 hour rule, you'll have to go back into the negotiation with the police union. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, in the 90s, we were able to clean up. I got, I got, I got. We were able to clean up inner Northeast Portland from prostitution. We were able to clean up Northeast Portland from drugs using community policing, yeah, yeah. where you had a combination of yeah. social service and law enforcement working together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't see that emphasis on community policing anymore. Well, back in the days, a guy, a guy named Dupay who had written a book, mm -hmm. he'd been on the show several times, former policeman type of thing. He actually was doing community policing back in his days. Mm -hmm. Get out the cars, right. talk to the kids, got my point, see, see dad or somebody uh, dr drunk down the street or at the bar or whatever, put them in the car and take them home. Yes. Right. Got me? They knew their area. They knew their That's area. That's community policing. Right. You got yes, my point? Yes. But in all due respect, we've changed the, the, the so-called recruitment, if you will, and criteria. One, you have to have a degree. Mm -hmm. See, these guys are just Well, busy. I don't think there's anything wrong I'm not, in being, I'm not talking about being, being educated now. But we need to have local people in those positions uh, uh, instead of bringing in folks from outside that don't know the neighborhood, that don't know the people. I know, but, but my point is that gun, so you got to understand. Oh, like, yeah, they got now, a I was, gun, I was too. trained alone to understand what that's all about. But in all due respect, in today's criteria, it's a whole different mindset. We, we do have affirmative action. You know, you got to have uh, small people, black, you know, all kinds of situations, women, the whole nine yards. But in all due respect, when you all due respect, you put that degree in there, and you give the person a gun, and they've not been to the community aspect of it. You 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 sitting in the car by yourself. In all due respect, you have a be a little guy. You get out there, there's three or four guys out there, and you say, "Oh, you're under arrest." Well, in most cases, they pull the gun out. Mm -hmm. They shoot first because they're scared. Yeah, they are scared. Yeah, you're scared. They are scared. And they're so you, you scared of black that males. Oh, yeah, they're scared. As square as, as Landon is, he scares the crap out of oh, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even you. Well, you know about that. Even <laughs> me. And I come from a family of black police I, officers, the Dukes. My bio, bio family, the Dukes. My sister is a straight up Duke. Well, like I said, you know, the whole idea of police also is called deterrent. You're right. They wear the uniform because of deterrent. Mm -hmm. If you if you're a nice big guy, if you're a big guy, you know. All, all, uh, I've seen some women, some women, women officers. They, they look tough. Okay? Yeah, they. But they the are bottom tough, line, yeah. those are the individuals that need to be getting out there on the streets. Right. I mean, and I'm not trying to be uh, sexist or whatever, or being short people. This and that. No, you gotta. It, it's a deterrent. When they put that uniform on, whatever, it's not reaching for the gun. You automatically know, hey, I did something wrong. Right. And you just answer the question. It's right. very simple. You got my point? So anyway, they need to have that discussion, but, but not just, quote, just a blanket kind of a deal. And plus the fact, the police don't run this city. That's true. The mayor runs this yeah, city. That's it, right. And when Charlie, did, when, when Charlie, Charlie Hill did on that last shooting, when they shot mm -hmm. that, and they basically, through arbitration, they let the guy go. 
What won't happen in my administration? Well, you know, uh, right now the city of Portland is under Department of Justice ruling mm -hmm. that dictates how they treat mentally ill and how they treat people of color. And the, I caught the incumbent in a lie. She said she supported that Department of Justice ruling, and she didn't. Yeah. Initially, she voted against it. Well, people are scared. They, they need to get to the table. Don't get me wrong. They're just as human human as, as I am, as far as mm -hmm. police is concerned. But you got to talk to them, and they under, need to understand what the leadership is all about. Who runs the city? If the if the mayor is the police com chief, and this is my commissioner, we're sitting down there, we're talking. <laughs> you got me? We are talking. I mean, I, I'm caring for their lives and all that. Pro this, this, that, and the other. But the fact of the matter is, there, there can't be a deterrent on just the opposite, if you will. Mm -hmm. You got mm -hmm. my point? Mm -hmm. You know. And so you you lay the rules down. It'll work. We'll work it out. And, you know, so you know, so that's where I'm. That's where I'm at. So my point is that we just need to talk. We need leadership now. That's what we need to be. And that's why I'm saying that uh, I think it's going to be just great to see Lalit and I on there. And by the way, the other thing we're going to be doing, at least once a week, or maybe twice a month, okay. we'll have these kind of discussions to educate the people through PCM. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. You yes. see what I'm saying? I yes. agree. Have I a agree. communicate. Communicate right, right there. Right. We're right. going to talk about this issue. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and with technology now, you can communicate just with your laptop. That's right. That's I right. just left the podcast broadcast. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, we support community media. Yes. But you're right. There's been very little communication. Yes, yes. At least with the folks. Now, I bet you they communicate with the folks in the West Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. as oh, far yeah. as little folks like us, no, they, they don't got communicate to. With they us. have to. I mean, imagine, imagine as you, as one would say, have Daryl, Daryl Turner sitting right here. He happens to be the uh, the union president. Mm -hmm. He happens to be an African American. Right. You know what I mean? And that's or another. Assistant chief. Yeah, and that's yeah. That's another. That's another point. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember the time fighting to get Harry Jackson and mm -hmm. other folks like that on the police department, mm -hmm. and then once he gets on the police department, I'm anti. <laughs> I mean, it don't make no damn sense. I mean, why should blacks be a, a, a upset with the police department when we put blacks on mm -hmm. to react to that? What are they doing? Right. See, right. so you, you understand what I'm saying? So we just need to know how to define what law enforcement is and who's who's basically making the laws. Right. We're making the laws. The people are making the laws, and there's a training packet for those individuals who are enforcing the law. Right. It's fair. It's community policing. That's all you're saying. That's all we're saying. Just, yeah. just community. It's community. And that's what we need to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. We got about eight more minutes since we start. We started off with mothers. Let's start. Let's let's end up with mothers. We got, I'll go around the table. We'll go over with you first, Amanda. Any what? any lasting thoughts? What about you? What about your wife? You're married, right? Yes. You got kids, right? Uh, yes. Okay. How's it, how is it with with mom at home now? You, uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Did you bring her flowers today? Uh, I did. You did bring her flowers. Did I you did. cook for her today? Uh, no. And no coffee and bed or something like no. that. Not nothing no. like. Oh my God, man! What's she gonna say? <laughs> uh, she doesn't drink coffee. Oh, she doesn't drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little Bailey or something. Like <laughs> well, well, I, you know, actually, my day started out going and working on some rental property. Okay, so okay, okay. she totally understands. Yeah, she okay, had no problem so, with that. So there's a trip going to Europe or something coming in here, right? Uh, I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, Anita. Well, Anita, I just want to say talk about that. about your daughter for uh, a minute. And the mama. Well, I'm. How much is you? you I'm know? truly honored and humbled by the kind of mother that my daughter turned out to be. I mean, she's a good mother. She's much more attentive to her daughter than I was at. You know, her daughter's four. When Nia was four, she was catching a bus by herself because wow. I had to go to work, right? Yeah, right? So I would give her some change, and she would go on, on the bus, and we were so poor that the bus driver said, no, nah, that's all right, you don't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> we were really, really poor, but I wasn't on government assistance. I wasn't right, on food yeah, stamps. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Officer Jackson used to see me really? walking up and down the street uh -huh. with my baby. Yeah, and he yeah. said, boy, I remember you guys. I just want to say to all the teenagers who have grandparents and who happen to be in an adversarial relationship with your grandmother, which is not an anomaly yeah, because there's right. a tremendous generational gap. Yeah. I want to say this. One day you're going to be asked a question and you have to be willing to answer that question. And the question is, are you willing to give up your activities, your fun, your money to stay at home and take care of grandma mm -hmm. or grandpa? Mm -hmm. And if you make a different decision that results in them not getting the kind of care that they deserve, you're going to live with guilt mm -hmm. the rest of your life. And no amount of drugs, alcohol, or other hedonistic behavior is going to rid you from that guilt. 
and you need to be able to answer that question. I was fortunate I was able to answer that question and again of all the things I've done that is the most important thing and I did it when I was 21. I gave up my radio show. She wouldn't let me quit my job because she's very old school but I gave up all my extracurricular activities and this was the height of my radio personality right, right. No, notoriety and I gave it all up to take care of her. And again, that's the most important thing I've ever done. And all of us are going to have to answer that question to give our relatives and the people that loved us a good death. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I was able to do that. And again, that's the most important thing. And I'm a, a flawed human being like all of us. Mm -hmm. But in that instance, I thought, and I continue to think I made the best decision. And again, of all the kids that she raised, I was the most rebellious, and I was the one. I was the one in going home to take care of her. Beautiful. So, beautiful. What a what a beautiful statement. That yeah, it's just like a that. full circle. Yes, uh, it's a beautiful I think statement. that she took me in as wow. a baby, wow. took care of me, Lovely. so that one day, 21 years later, when she needed someone to take care right, of her, right, it was right. me. Wow! Wow! That's huge. That's yes, yeah, true story. Wow. You know, we only have about a, about about a minute or so at this point in time. What do you think the change has been? What, what, but you know, we're getting ready to go into baby booms. That we're really getting in the grandmas and the grandpas this time around. Why, why the change? What do you think? Well, I think age and uh, you know, people are going to have to s figure out how do they want grand. They either want grandma in a home or they want grandma in their homes. And that goes back to my well, point. Yes. my point that yes. we need to reconfigure some of our property to mm -hmm. take grandma in, we were so doing they can that. live with us. We were doing that at one point in time. Trust me, we were doing that right. with grandmas. And we that need that. to cut the fees on ADUs. And what? ADUs. ADUs. Yeah, we need to cut the fees. That would solve a lot of our uh, housing issues, and we could put a granny flat in the back. Nice. And not have to pay a $30,000 nice. nice. uh, permit fee. Nice, nice, nice. Good. It's, it's, That's what you could do as mayor. Right. Right. <laughs> you hear that? That's what you can do as mayor. Well, you got, evidently you got engaged with the neighborhood association. Now you're bringing it up. <laughs> and he happens to be the neighborhood association. See? So that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. And my job is to make sure I get the money there and it gets audited to make sure. Yeah, I can't believe they be want to get there. cut the budget for the city for the auditor. auditor. And one, I have a, I believe in the auditor's bill won't happen. rights. Won't happen. Won't happen under On that Bruce. note, won't happen. Folks, thank you very, very much for being with us today. Uh, again, have these discussions today with your mom, if you will, and talk about you, your mom, whether she's here with you today or now uh, or not. But my point is that talk a little bit, communicate. Very important. We're getting ready to get in that area. A lot of folks are going to be getting old, and you need to take care of it. Be a good mother. Be a good father. Be a good son. Be a good daughter. Have a good one. Take care. See you next week.